friends, and uh, I was getting worried there when he was going into my physical attributes. Um, I, but he did make one very important point, which I apologise, I suppose, in advance, that I can't be as explicit about things as I'd like to be, because the last occasion I was in government, I lasted seven weeks, when one of my staff decided to leak a summary of the budget, and I don't want to be accused of doing the same and be... Maybe I've got six, seven months out of it, I suppose, at this stage. It'll be a bit early to go, though, when we're getting into an exciting time of implementation. Uh, but I'd like to thank the Institute of International and European Affairs for the invitation to speak to such an august gathering, and uh, it's great to see many, so many here interested in this subject. And the reform of the water services sector is something that I have been studying and thinking about long before the EU IMF agreement, I might add. Uh, and uh, I published some documentation on that and policy on that some years ago. And it's amazing the way that people read these things now. They didn't read it at all at that time. Um, but the seminar today is very timely. Uh, and I commend the Institute for assembling uh, a panel of international expertise uh, that I'm sure will give us the benefit of experiences. And I want to uh, invite you, Mr. Chairman, to collate the, the distilled wisdom of the seminar here today to uh, inform our thinking and the initiation of the process tomorrow in Cabinet is, is, is what it is, initiation. Uh, but over the next couple of weeks, I'd be glad to feed in your views and we have to get this right. Uh, and uh, we get one, one shot at it probably in our lifetime to get it right. So there are big decisions to be made and we'd appreciate uh, your views. Uh, the water supply system in, in Ireland today is not working to the extent that we would like with over 950 public water supplies producing over 1,600 million litres a day to a network of 25,000 kilometres of pipe. The pipe isn't great, the water isn't great in places, and uh, the volumes and quality generally have to be improved. We cannot have the type of household quality and uh, re reduction in illnesses and dangers to public health. We cannot have job creation, inward investment, without having good quality and volumes of water. The EPA data indicates that some 85% of the population are connected to public water supplies and 8% are connected to group schemes. So we have a lot of connectiv connectivity in the public area. And the remainder of the population receive their water supplies from private wells. I don't know why they're getting excited about septic tanks then, if that's the case, you know, such a small number. But the water services authorities are responsible, directly or indirectly, for wastewater provision in some 480 agglomerations, with a population equivalent of more than 500 and over 500 further dominations with population equivalents of less than 500. So the latest report on water quality by the EPA, water quality in Ireland 20, uh, 2007 to 2009, uh, has found evidence of some improvements in water quality. But in comparison with our other EU member states, Ireland has better than average water quality, but continued improvements across a range of sectors are needed if Ireland is to achieve our water quality targets for 2015 and 2020, as we are required to do under the Water Framework Directive. And achieving these goals and managing this diverse and dynamic sector requires a partnership between a number of uh, particular important actors, the department obviously, local authorities, the group water sector, and the EPA as the, in the environmental regulator for this sector. Investment in water services is strategically planned uh, to ensure the timing and scale of investment uh, facilitates economic and other development. In excess of five billion in exchequer resources have been spent on the provision of water services infrastructure from 2000 to 2010. And in 2011, the government has provided 435 million euro in exchequer contributions to the program. And you'll hear, you'll hear in the next few days how much money we have for 20, 2012. But I, I would say that the government has, is keen and is aware of the importance of our water uh, services program and the importance of it in terms of the issues I've just mentioned. Um, funding the operational cost of water services is a significant demand in local authorities. Uh, we're not in a position now to have the type of money that we would like to have in order to, at, at, public, uh, uh, at public level, for the purpose of delivering on our water services program. So we have to find a new model, new opportunity, in order to uh, leverage monies from the private sector or from other sources. Because of operational costs now, in 2010, 715 million euros often taken for granted. And the programme for government provides for, you know, some significant reforms in, this semi -state, in the, in the semi-state sector through the recently established new era, and the restructuring of the water services is a very important aspect of this initiative. New era is the vehicle for reforming the manner in which government manages its shareholding. 
in certain semi state companies, including reviewing capital programs from a shareholder perspective. And these reform measures are central elements of our plans for job creation and maximise investment to support economic recovery. Now, we have the EU IMF agreement uh, obliges Ireland to do an independent assessment of what's the structure, operation, and delivery of our water services into the future. I've just received that particular assessment and have been going through it. And uh, we are going to be establishing a new utility. Uh, and the question that we have to decide whether you have a, a new company for that purpose or whether you use existing structures in the semi-state or otherwise in order to deliver uh, an entity called Irish Water. So PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, did this independent assessment and the purpose was to examine the existing organisational arrangements um, and to look at the best assignment of water functions for the future. And the assessment is taking account of the lessons that we learned from relevant international organisational models, I'm sure you'll discuss them today, as well as benchmarking the, some, some Irish performance data with the experience in other jurisdictions. Uh, the Royal PwC were also part, uh, asked to consider the potential forms of company formation that I've just mentioned. Many of you have, might have read media reports this weekend about the study. I can confirm that PwC have uh, given me the report. They, they haven't given me the final report, so over the next few weeks we will be getting more data from them and finalising uh, matters in relation to the structure, function, operation, and all of the matters that go with delivering our water services programme in a new way. It's a very big decision, and it, certainly we, we have, as I mentioned earlier, need to get it right. Obviously, there will be principles uh, that we will do. You wouldn't need to deliver whatever public services we have now and most effectively and efficiently, uh, while at the same time valuing existing experience. And as I mentioned, it is critical that any new organisation or arrangements must harness the expertise and knowledge of the water services provision, which has built up in the local authorities over the years. So we have to ensure that the expertise and knowledge is deployed strategically and efficiently to meet the significant challenges of the sector. Compliance requirements remain a priority, and the requirements of the Water Framework Directive and drinking water and wastewater regulations must be met and will require continued levels of investment. The first set of river basin management plans required under the Directive was completed in 2010 and identified significant additional investment in wastewater infrastructure to address water quality issues in catchments and protect drinking water uh, resources. These additional investments were included in the Water Services Programme 2010 to 2012. Unaccounted for water is a huge issue in some parts of the country in particular. Some parts, we have a water averaging problem in terms of unaccounted for water, 41%. That's not sustainable. And tackling on economic levels of leakage will therefore continue to require prioritisation. 130 million we're spending this year uh, in order to deal with our National Water Conservation Programme. Uh, the Water Services Programme of 2010 envisages that contracts to the value of over 300 million will commence during the programme period, uh, with the emphasis now on rehabilitation of the defective water mains. <coughs> there are other significant challenges as well. Dealing with the environmental sustainability issues are also a priority. Our water infrastructure will need ongoing maintenance and upgrading to ensure the integrity of the infrastructure. An increased investment in new treatment plants for drinking water and wastewater combined with rising energy costs and more stringent environment standards and operational costs all means more money. And so therefore the present funding model for water services includes three main sources of revenue at the moment, the exchequer, the local authorities' own resources and income from charging, the non-domestic sector. So we're going to find money elsewhere, we're going to charge by water, char by water meter from 2014. Uh, we're going to take account of the fact that we will have a new model that may be able to attract in private finance. But there's no getting away from the fact that we need other places to get money because we don't have it in the public capital programme or unlikely to have it in the next couple of years. But a well-structured and a regulated organisational model has the capacity to leverage this type of investment and to access funds and to ensure a financially sustainable sector. Uh, water charges will be a fundamental feature of the income stream for that investment for people that want to get involved. Currently, Ireland is the only country in the OECD that doesn't charge for water, uh, particularly for domestic, <coughs> domestic householders. And uh, the OECD have also concluded that metering is unequivocally the fairest way to charge for domestic water usage, and it incentivizes householders to use water sparingly. I believe that the water charges will 
can reduce consumption by 20%, but also if we get this right in relation to where we put the water meter, we could re reduce an awful lot of leakages. So the government recognises uh, that the introduction of a fair funding model to deliver clean and reliable wa water is critical to the future economic growth and recovery of our country. The reforms that I've just spoken about and, and that we're planning it for is an indication of our thinking. Uh, independent economic regulation also is going to be a key element of an institutional separation and it also fulfills an important role in the protection of consumer interests. It aims to ensure that investments and prices proposed by regulated water authorities are transparent and consistent with providing efficient service delivery and expenditure. Regulation will therefore ensure that the price paid by consumers is fair and set at the appropriate level to recover the costs of providing the water service. Economic regulation of the water sector will also be a key requirement in order to allow Irish water to raise finance from the markets. It will provide consumers with the reassurance that the charges that they're paying are fair and that the services that they're getting are delivered efficiently. So, Chairman, I want to conclude by thanking people for being here uh, so early this morning for to uh, get this seminar, a very important seminar, going. I want to assure you that uh, your knowledge and experience uh, is welcome uh, to the Department in coming to conclusions about this important matter in terms of uh, the agenda items I've just outlined. Uh, and I will be looking forward, Mr Chairman, to hearing the result of your deliberations in the next few days. Thank you very much.